Hello everyone and welcome back to another video from Arctic Retro and in today's video I'm gonna build a ROM adapter for the Commodore 64. So here I got the Commodore 64 motherboard and as you can see it's missing a lot of parts but uh, it still has two of its uh, ROMs on it and the thing is if uh, one of the ROMs, these three ROMs um, are damaged or doesn't work anymore then it's uh, not uh, very easy to find new ones because uh, they're simply not manufactured anymore and you need to find them from uh, other Commodore 64s or find someone that sells on eBay or something. However, modern EEPROMs are available like this Winbond 27C512 that you can actually use and uh, you can program these with a ROM code for one of the existing ROMs and uh, use them. But as you can see, this doesn't fit because it has uh, two extra pins. Actually, it's four extra pins. So um, you have to have an adapter, also the pinout is not the same, so uh, that presents a problem. One thing you can do is to take a socket that fits, uh, same size as this, and then you use um, the EEPROM into that and you figure out which pins uh, need to be, be rooted where, and uh, then you can actually solder everything together, but that is uh, quite difficult. However, somebody else has already thought about that and uh, they have uh, come up with uh, ready-made PCBs. I got a bunch of them here and uh, these are ROM adapters that you can use instead of uh, making it yourself. This adapter PCB has uh, two rows of um, holes. As you can see, um, one row that uh, will go into the original uh, socket on the motherboard and one row that actually fits uh, this EEPROM. And I got this from uh, PCBWay uh, Shared Projects. PCBWay has a lot of already made designs that you can uh, simply click on and order uh, the amount you need and uh, they produce very good quality PCBs like this one. Let me just take a moment here and thank my sponsor PCBWay who supports this channel. PCBWay offers a wide range of services for PCB prototyping. You can upload your own designs and uh, get uh, your PCBs produced and delivered uh, for a very affordable price within days. Besides that, they also do advanced PCBs, PCB assembly and CNC machining and 3D printing. Right now they are hosting their Christmas festival 2021 where they have uh, big sales and they have free Christmas coupons, special offers and a lucky draw. So please visit PCB Way to check it out. And now back to the video. Let me zoom in and we can see the details. So um, yeah, it's not easy to see with the solder mask over but as you can see there is uh, routings between uh, the different pins of the two different um, ROM chips. So what I'm gonna do now is to um, solder this together and uh, test it on a Commodore 64 and uh, I might even try and uh, modify uh, the ROM code to suit my particular needs. Because uh, a large uh, 64 kilobyte ROM like this can hold eight uh, of those Commodore 64 ROMs which are 8k each. I'm not going to use uh, this chip, I'm going to use another one. This is a UV erasable EEPROM that is um, 16k and that means I only need to fit in one resistor for... Uh, yeah, you have uh, these address lines that you can use to switch between different ROMs on the same chip. So this can fit two ROMs but I'm only going to use one for now, I think. <laughs> And I don't have SMD uh, resistors, so I'm going to use a regular one and it will be hard to fit three resistors. So with this one, you only need one resistor. The two other can be just bridged together. All right, so I'm going to solder in the socket. And uh, first thing I need to figure out is uh, what uh, side is up. And I guess the one with the silk screen is up. So I'm going to solder this socket uh, onto that side. By the way, this um, 
design and the instructions for it uh, you can find on uh, github i'll link to that uh, in the description so this one just place it upside down it should keep uh, its weight down on the socket let's do the soldering and a little bit of uh, gum just to keep it steady i think i'll start here with the two corners as usual And I have my soldering station set to uh, 330 degrees. Well, well, I just stopped because I realized a big mistake. <laughs> Of course, I need to solder in uh, the pin headers on the uh, underside first because uh, otherwise it will be hard to <laughs> solder them under the socket. So I'm just gonna fix that. I'm gonna desolder this and try once more. I don't wanna waste this uh, board and this socket, so um, I'm gonna desolder the socket. I didn't put in many pins anyway. No, this uh, solder isn't very old, so it should be easy to <laughs> remove it. All right, so now that's taken care of. This uh, came off really easy. That cost me five minutes extra work. Now, these are the pin headers I want to use. And these go, of course, on the back side and, uh, yeah. Okay, one way you can solder in these um, pin headers and get them uh, straight is uh, by using a breadboard like this. And then you place um, the pins so that it fits with uh, the board and it's easy to solder on top. Okay, so now I'm ready to start over again. <laughs> and I'm gonna use as little uh, solar as possible because these are gonna be cut down as uh, far as possible. All right, that was uh, that part. Now this should fit perfectly into a socket, which it does. Now the socket goes on top, but uh, we need to cut down uh, the pins on top first. And when you cut pins like that, they fly all over the room and can easily hit you in the eye. So yeah, I'm gonna use uh, something hold over. So that is better and now we can try and solder in the socket again. So almost done, looks okay. Of course it builds a bit in the height, but um, there's plenty of room in the Commodore uh, 64. And by the way, these can be used um, on uh, WIC 20 as well and other computers. So now I need a 10K resistor and uh, yeah, I should have had a collection of SMD, but I'm not doing a lot of SMD soldering so I don't have anything. Let's find a 10k. This should go into R1 and R2 and 3 should be 0k that is bridged together. So I think I'll start with uh, two uh, solder blobs that goes on R2 and 3. Get those out of the way. And now it's a difficult part um, R1 just gonna add a little blob of solder onto those pads. Then I hopefully can uh, arrange uh, this uh, resistor to <laughs> be soldered on. This is not a pretty job, but this is uh, homemade stuff. 
I wouldn't sell this to anyone. So that one went all right. Then the other one, let's see now. Yeah, that works. And then we can bend it over like that. Tuck it away underneath. Yeah, that will work. All right, we're done with the soldering and the chip can go in, but first we need to program it. And uh, as you can see, you can uh, attach uh, jumpers or switches uh, for the different address lines. I could insert one for address line 13 to switch between the two um, available ROMs. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna just have one ROM on this one. All right, it's time to find uh, the ROM, but uh, first here I'm at the GitHub page of this project where you can read all the different um, instructions and it's called Open2327 ROM Adapter on Sukupera. Here's the description of how you configure uh, the board for the different uh, EEPROM types. Here's my uh, EEPROM uh, burner or programmer and I'm inserting uh, the chip. This is a UV erasable EEPROM, that means you can only write to it once. And uh, if you want to erase it, you need to expose it for UV lights for uh, perhaps uh, one day or something. I'm not really sure. <laughs> Here I'm in the programmer software and now I need to find the correct chip. So I just search for it. It's uh, M27128. And it's actually an ST. So Tip 28, that's the correct uh, one. Select that. So here I am on the simmers.net and I want to download the kernel ROM because I'm pretending that uh, my kernel ROM is uh, not working. So I just find the correct one here. This is 8 kilobyte for second revision. And here we have 03, the most widely spread version. So I'm going to download that one. And then I go into my uh, EEPROM programmer software and I already selected the correct chip. It's M27128A from ST. So now I just want to load um, the kernel uh, version I downloaded. I have uh, several others here, that one. And uh, then I want to do some modifications because I want to make it a little bit personal. and. Uh, as you can see down here, you can actually see the text on the boot screen, the basic bytes free Commodore basic. So I want to change that to uh, <laughs> something else like uh, Arctic Retro Basic. Isn't that cool? And then I just want to save that file. Now, since we're going to use only one uh, ROM of the two that can fit on the chip, I actually need to copy the same uh, ROM onto uh, both uh, areas. And uh, the way I do that is that I just uh, copy with slash B, means binary, and uh, I just copy the same file twice with a plus, that means concatenate, and uh, call it uh, new kernel dot bin. So this should uh, have created uh, one new file that is 32k exactly. Then I just load in uh, the new file we just created and uh, yeah, new kernel. And we can see now it says Arctic Retro Basic. <laughs> That's fun. All right, so now it's time to program. I just hit the program button and then program. All right, it failed. Let me just check one thing. Yeah, I'm uh, ticking off this check ID, then start again. Pin detect error. Didn't I insert it correctly? I think I did. Program. Okay, so now it worked. I just took it out and inserted it again. But it still failed. Verifying flash error code address. So I'm just going to try and read the chip. I don't know why it actually failed on writing. It seems to be written, so reading. 
read successful yeah and here we can actually see the thing read back correctly arctic retro basic so i think we're good to test to test out the, the rom mod i actually got my uh, 664 homemade uh, version which i built from scratch you can see the videos uh, on that uh, on my channel and this actually has uh, this uh, rom modification already with uh, three nice uh, looking roms here it's uh, built on another uh, PCB and not the same that I used, but these work great. So time to test. Does it work or does it blow up? <laughs> Probably not gonna blow up. Bend the legs a bit. So this is the kernel ROM, the one in the middle here. Just pull this gently out and uh, insert the new one. Ready to test, one, two, three. Hmm, nothing. So the ROM did not work. Uh, however, I inserted the other ROM from this machine and uh, gonna test with that. See if uh, in fact the adapter is working. Yes, that works. So then I know the adapter is in fact working and there is something wrong with uh, the ROM. I checked the ROM now by reading it back into the programmer and in fact it uh, seems like only uh, one of the two 8k blocks uh, were written so uh, it's probably um, the last block uh, that is uh, configured to be used now but um, then we can fix that I think by adding a jumper and uh, setting that to use uh, the other block. So to fix that we need to short between uh, the switch A13 and uh, ground. Just going to do that with two uh, pin headers. I could of course have tried and burnt another EEPROM but uh, then I would waste this one and uh, yeah I just made a little uh, jumper cable here and <laughs> yeah this will do. All right, so now this should uh, bridge those two. Okay, so this must be the most fancy ROM adapter you have ever seen, isn't it? <laughs> and look at that, my own personal uh, kernel ROM for the C64. <laughs> isn't that cool? Arctic Retro Basic V2, nice. <laughs> UV ROMs like this should be protected against the UV light, especially if they're not sitting in a machine. So I just covered it up. All right, that was it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed the content. I made my own personal kernel ROM for the C64, which was uh, great fun. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and uh, thanks to my patrons. Bye bye.